So hi, Ritesh. Let me introduce you. So Ritesh has teased uh, 42,000 students on Udemy and uh, YouTube. YouTube, he has a uh, 6,000 followers on YouTube. So with, this is a pretty big number. And if you are uh, doing this without entertainment, you are teaching people and getting this big number. I'm your fan. So this is a huge number for uh, yeah. So. Ritesh, so let's yeah. talk about your journey. How you started in artificial intelligence, IoT, electronics, mm -hmm. and computer vision. So these mm -hmm. are extreme fields in science, computer science, and you are doing all this uh, by your own, and mm -hmm. you are teaching other people on Udemy as well. So how you started your journey? Let's discuss that. Okay, so I started off a uh, long time ago, say around 2013. I was busy with my masters and I wanted to do something very exciting. So my speciality was in electronics and I started pulling out these small, tiny um, uh, Arduino PCBs, basically small microcontrollers uh, that you can use to build any kind of project that you want. So I was working on that and just, uh, just exciting to an extent and then then I came across uh, like augmented reality and I was like, oh, this is some um, really cool, cool stuff. So I started developing AR apps, uh, just like basic uh, apps for using Vuforia and it was going well. Say around 2016, 2017, I created some courses, um, some videos just posting on YouTube. I didn't really care how many views I got, I just like posted because I was really passionate about augmented reality and extended reality and those sorts of things. And then slowly, uh, the AI trend took over and I was like, okay, how can I jump on board onto the train and catch the trend on, on YouTube? So from there, I moved on to AI, learning about things as they come along, watching a whole lot of YouTube videos to figure out how this thing works. And then <clears throat> my speciality is mostly in computer vision. And I decided, let me just focus on that so I, I can use AI and mix that together with augmented reality and s see how that turns out. Because essentially augmented reality is a subfield of computer vision and AI is just augmenting the augmented reality, if you get what I'm saying. So yeah, uh, right now I'm just busy with mixing AI with uh, augmented reality at the moment. So let's talk about augmented startups. So this is your channel as well as uh, your course tutorials are with this name. So how you started, how you came up with this name and how you started this augmented startups? So I was looking for a brand for my business. Uh, initially started off as Arduino startups because I was build, building these Arduino boards. Then I tried to realign my brand with what I'm actually doing um, in augmented reality. So I changed it from Arduino startups to augmented startups. There's a lot of names I could come up with. So Lumina Innova is the parent company. I had to also register this as a company. So. I got Lumina Innova and then Augmented Startups is the subsidiary of Lumina Innova. Yeah. So recently we have seen a very popular project you are working on, which is Project Edith, the glasses yeah. from uh, the movie. And it's uh, mm. from Far From Home. Uh, there they mm. uh, get the glasses, he, uh, the Spider-Man get the glasses from Tony Stark and mm -hmm. this is with the augmented reality glasses he puts mm -hmm. on and he can see much more information like what people are texting to each other and everything. So uh, you are creating such kind of technology. So how, how, how is it going and what is the potential of such kind of technology? Uh, it's, it's a really exciting project. Like the moment I seen it, I was like, okay, I want to do something like this. Obviously I was looking at how can we take current technology that we have today and integrate it into something like form factor of like glasses. Obviously, it's, it's hard to, to put everything into your glasses frame. So at the moment, I'm just using my computer, my desktop computer, and then eventually we want to fuse this onto an Android system. And then I don't know if you heard of the Android glasses or the Magic Leap, those sorts of things. Yeah, so I want to basically take those platforms and try to make it smaller as much as we can. There's, there's only so much we can do with technology, but most people, from what I've seen online, not much have integrated AI onto augmented reality. So uh, we can take this a step further and then see how we can make make it real. There's, I don't know if you watched the YouTube channel Hacksmith and there's Jay Laser Video. They have prototypes of the Edith glasses. Uh, they're doing a really good job so far on, on that. And for me, I want to see how I can integrate my skills in AI and augmented reality and see how cool can we make this project.
So yeah. So uh, let's talk about computer vision. Since you have a major in computer vision and, and you uh, have an electronics, uh, you did uh, started with electronics where mm -hmm. you implemented a lot of uh, computer vision. So let's talk about what it is and how exactly computer vision works. Okay. Uh, so there's two forms of computer vision. So there's one where you can manipulate pixels and the other where you can extract information from the pixels. Depending on what, what your goal is, you can, if you want to manipulate pixels, it's, that's very similar to what you do in Photoshop and in Paint. Also, Deepfake takes your image and swaps your face with someone else's face, like maybe Donald Trump or some famous celebrity. So that's one way you can use computer vision. Other way you can use computer vision is for extracting information. So most popular uh, tools that I uh, use is object detection, which is detecting the person's face, detecting different classes like you can detect a dog, cat, car, you can detect plants, or you can train for whatever you, you want. There's also object segmentation, which is taking object detection to the next level by just extracting the pixels of the certain object that you're trying to detect. And then there's also pose estimation where you get the human body frame. That's, you've probably seen that in the Xbox Connect and you're able to do all these, play all these fancy games and uh, those sorts of things. You can do a lot of uh, things like animation and controlling objects using your body. So there's a lot to computer vision and there's a lot of potential with respect to augmented reality as well. Exactly. Uh, so speaking of, about computer vision, there's a library called OpenCV, so which mm -hmm. means open vision. So this is a free library for everyone and everybody is contributing to this library mm. and now it's becoming bigger. So mm. uh, what kind of things we can achieve in computer vision using OpenCV? And uh, is there the library which is similar and uh, this much effective? Yeah, so OpenCV obviously is open source computer vision library. So the C obviously uh, stands for computer vision and you can do a lot of things. So from shape detection, you want to detect certain objects, but now the library has expanded to more of the deep neural networks. So you can take it and do object detection. So what we're doing now is for Project Edith, I'm using OpenCV for Unity and bringing that into basically into Project Edith and having that uh, up and running. With regards to other parts of the framework, you can do face detection as well. So if I want to detect faces or recognize different faces, you can do that. There's a lot of uh, functions in OpenCV if you, if you want to check that out. Definitely. So there is shape detection, there is models yeah. like heart rocket, and you can do uh, face detection. Yeah. There's also an augmented reality uh, function in OpenCV. So if you don't want to use uh, Vuforia, you can use uh, that. But I, I found out that the tracking doesn't work too well with the OpenCV version, for four is like way ahead of the game. <laughs> exactly. So uh, let's talk about augmented reality and AI. So when we combine these two, the magical things appear in mm. the real. So uh, what uh, what is this? Just give it some uh, light. OK. So augmented reality is all about understanding your environment. So the more you understand about your environment, the more you can make your augmented reality experience a bit more immersive. So if you, I don't know if you've seen the video, there's one video where there's a Pikachu running around um, the park and a camera was just looking at it and when it went behind the pot plant, uh, you were still able to see it. Now, if you have AI with occlusion detection, you can use that to hide the object that you want to look at because it makes it much more immersive when it goes be, um, behind the object. So AI is more about understanding your environment. Like I said, some people are using SLAM, uh, which is also known as simultaneous localization and mapping. So where you map your whole environment and you're able to see your whole environment in your augmented reality frame. Not only that, but if you augment an object like if you've seen AR core, they detect planes. I'm not sure exactly what they're using. I don't think they're using AI for that, but they're using computer vision algorithms to, to see where your tabletop is, where your, your wall meets the, the floor. And from that, you're able to generate 3D virtual objects onto those planes. And with AI, I, I see it more being used for making things a bit lighter. So instead of having generic model doing something, you can have AI generating that model for you and making things a little bit easier, lighter for your mobile device to handle. So it can be used for a lot of things. Yeah. Exactly. So 
So uh, you are also using uh, augmented reality with IoT stuff. So mm. there are remote sensing and IoT projects. Uh, there are some kind of sensors which you are connecting with augmented reality and displaying information about the sensors. So mm. uh, how these projects works and uh, what are they? So I was looking at a way that we can represent generic information in a much more futuristic way. So I used Internet of Things. I had like a little, because I, I used my expertise in electronics and Arduino programming and software PCB design. I also used this, this one board called the Particle Photon. Uh, that was used for getting information from whatever sensors you, you connected to it. So I connected like a heart rate sensor, Another one was just a temperature sensor, um, light sensor. So all these different sensors, I tried to integrate uh, via the web. And using Unity and a JSON protocol, uh, I was able to uh, get that data and represent it in augmented reality. So, so that was, it was quite fun. Like I enjoyed it. People really found the way I represented it quite exciting. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of potential to like, not only like switch on and switch off your lights, but also to represent information in a much more convenient way for people. Exactly. So uh, there are a lot of libraries, like there is OpenCV, there is ARKit, ARCore. Mm -hmm. Which one is your favorite? I mean, so many options, Euphoria is there. And I mean, which is the most convenient way if I want to target things like cross-platform and everything? Mm -hmm. What is your best experience with that? I think my favorite is, has to be Euphoria. Mainly because cross-platform, it also incorporates AR Core, AR Kit. Um, there's also AR Foundation, but I haven't had experience with that, so I can't really tell you if it's good or not. The best thing about Euphoria is it's very simple. Like I can just download the package and get up and running, and also the tracking is very good with markerbase and markerless AR. So I, I would have to go for Euphoria. There's also Wikitude. I haven't tested them uh, too well. I just like try the demo out, I haven't seen if it's good. But uh, are they really some really good features as well? More on par with Vuforia. But I think Vuforia is the, normally the go-to SDK for most AR developers. Exactly, and it supports most amount of hardware than any mm. other. Yeah. So there is something uh, AR kit has restricted the whole estimation, those estimation is a so basically, if you are seeing a human being, a human skeleton, you can predict where are the arms, where are the legs, where is the head. Mm, mm. This is pose estimation. So this feature is available in ARKit 3, and, uh, mm. but only available for uh, iPhones, which are, uh, I mean, the latest one. Uh, even mm. in iPhone X, there is no support for a pose estimation. But um, you uh, showed us a way of uh, getting the pose estimation from the mm -hmm. Google networks uh, from uh, using TensorFlow. So let's talk about that. When I tested both estimation, running it on my computer, it runs at a very, very, like a uh, very low frame rate. <laughs> uh, it's uh, very process intensive. So for Apple to implement it on their devices and, and running in real time, it's quite impressive. The thing with both estimation, because it's so process intensive, they have to run it on like the latest hardware uh, that can support or can maintain that frame rate, which is uh, quite impressive. I hope uh, Air Core integrates it anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, features like phase detection and phase recognition. So they are two mm -hmm. completely different things. They sound similar, but one is in the, uh, more to do with just the shapes and the other mm -hmm. one is uh, identifying the specific features on the face and remembering mm -hmm. them. So yeah. what are the good libraries to achieve these tasks? Uh, if you want to do it hard-coded, say using generic models, you can use like normal half highlight features. There's also Viola and Jones as well. Uh, there's actually a lot of ways you can conquer face detection. If you're looking at the latest in technology or using AI for face detection, you can use a thing called FaceNet. I, don't know, I think it's from Google. Uh, essentially, they, you can use a neural network. You train it on a bunch of faces. What is a face? What is not a face? Uh, and then put that through your neural network and see if, how, how that works. But from what I've tried, I think FaceNet works really well. There's a lot of other face detection algorithms for Java and Python and all that. The ones I use uh, uses ResNet. I show how to do this in uh, Project Ears. And we start off with face detection and then we move on to facial recognition and 
Facial recognition is a bit harder. Okay, not that harder, but like more process intensive because you not only have to detect the face, you have to also uh, recognize who that is in the frame. Uh, and also you can see that your frame rate will also drop uh, depending on what you do with that. <laughs> yeah, so I haven't worked too much on face detection, but uh, I just used it for project users at the moment. So, yeah. Okay, amazing. So, uh, you mentioned some challenges about running the uh, YouTube. So, what are mm. those challenges? Uh, the challenges is mostly time. <laughs> Getting the time to do this because I uh, also run a full-time job and I come home, uh, we eat and clean up and everything and then I work on this uh, after, after that, after hours. So, hopefully one day when I'm able to support myself or when I get enough support from my students and basically all, all my supporters, I'll be able to uh, make the transition slowly into this as a full-time job. And which is quite, will be quite exciting. Uh, this will also mean that I'll be able to uh, produce more videos, uh, get videos out faster and you know. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's a dream that I can just sit in my office, do my thing and work as much as I want on this project and then have the evening to relax and spend with my wife also. Awesome. So, mm. uh, yeah, exactly. The time is the biggest challenge with YouTube. Perfectly. Yeah. Fine. So, uh, let's discuss about future of augmented reality. Where mm. do you see the next five years or so the augmented reality is going towards? Augmented reality, I think it's moving more towards becoming smarter. So there's also things like projection AR. So if you have a projector projecting down onto a surface and using AI to detect what that object is and augmenting that, that environment. I've seen one example where there was a camera, there was a bunch of cameras and they had projectors pointing down and you can, you are able to select, uh, click on the surface and you'll be able to see like a display showing around that camera, seeing the price and the specs and everything like that. That was uh, quite cool. So I think one of my future projects, I'll try and implement projection AR and mix it along with AI as well. In terms of other future, uh, becoming smarter, uh, I mentioned that. There's a company called 6D.ai. They're working on extended reality, making your environment much more real. So they, they included occlusion detection, increasing the resolution of your plane detection, motion tracking, trying to get it more real. There's also one of the big problems I find at the moment is the augmented reality hardware. Now you have to use your phone, so you have to always look around and hold your phone there, but that's not really quite immersive. That's not really that immersive. I think the future is to get uh, augmented reality headset uh, or glasses uh, that you can just, you know, just have a display showing on there and having your augmented reality experience happen there. But you've probably seen like the HoloLens, which is very expensive. Magic Leap is very expensive. In real is the develop kit is about a thousand US dollars, <laughs> which is crazy. Uh, I mean, if uh, like me and you, uh, we want to play with augmented reality and uh, mixed reality, but now we have to buy this expensive hardware. It's, it's just crazy. How can we get augmented reality to the masses without having to develop such expensive hardware? So. There's also other options like using AR cardboard, it's like Google Cardboard, but with a little glass sheet where you're able to put your phone on top and it just reflects your phone. Uh, that's one option for inexpensive hardware that you can use. Also hand tracking using Le uh, Leap Motion. So Leap Motion created this project called Project North Star and you're able to have your hands in there and able to manipulate certain objects. So. Augmented reality is not just putting on your glasses and viewing the scene and say, okay, this is nice, but it's not solving any problems. So we need to solve problems with augmented reality. So people in industrial and military environments, say I'm going into maintain an elevator. I just can put on my glasses and say, okay, this is all the information I got. What's the most important things that I need to know? Uh, so if a transistor blue, I need to know how to change a transistor. The HoloLens helps with that, but like I said, it's, it's way too expensive and we need to get augmented reality into schools for education, for training. And that's what we focus on is mostly training and helping people. The way Leap Motion can help is if I'm able to use it for design. So if you look at uh, one of the, I think the first Iron Man movies where he, he was using augmented reality or hologram display, he was able to design his Iron Man suit using a holographic interface. 
and it's also able to use his hands to manipulate the objects as well. So I, I think uh, the future of augmented reality is uh, interactive, smart, and also one that solves problems in, in our society, not just uh, uh, for show. I can show you this really cool project either, but if it doesn't solve a problem, then what's the use of it, you know? Yeah. So exactly, uh, augmented reality is there to help someone, and if it's uh, not augmenting the information, uh, the correct and uh, useful information, then it's not much work. But uh, in future, definitely, it's going to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Some courses which you are providing, Nitin also asked me that uh, uh, that you are providing some good. Uh, so exactly, uh, augmented reality is there to help someone, and if it's uh, not augmenting the information, uh, the correct and uh, useful information, then it's not much work. But uh, in future, definitely, it's going to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Some courses which you are providing, Nitin also asked me that uh, uh, that you are providing some good uh, face recognition and face detection uh, courses and uh, project edit and mm. related. So let's discuss some of the courses you are providing. Okay, I have about I think around eighteen to twenty courses. I'm mostly focusing on, like I said, augmented reality, AI, those sorts of things. So with the augmented reality, I've got this course called uh, Fufuria, both twelve apps. So in this, I teach you from the basics how to get started. If if you just if you have no coding experience at all, or if you're just getting started out in Unity, you, okay, maybe you know to build a few Unity projects. But now, how do you uh, go about augmented reality? So I show you how to build these augmented reality apps, and uh, by then at the end of the course, you're able to understand and build your own apps after you've learned the basics and mostly i believe in learning through practice so the more you practice the better you get some people want to teach theory 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 but then they don't actually know how to build it so i try to focus on a little bit of theory and mostly focus on practical experience and building up your skills if you've got the skills you can do anything the other courses I have uh, is uh, I got one course on Internet of Things with augmented reality. So there you build, I think, another couple of apps. Where you connect the heart rate sensor to your finger, and then you're able to overlay like a skeleton with the beating heart that uh, <laughs> that uh, shows you how fast your heart is beating. Some cool projects like that. Um, I try to figure out what people would like and try to build according to that. And the other course I have is on uh, AR Core. Just when it got released, I tried to, how this thing works, read through all the documentation, uh, how can we make this easy for people. That's where things got a bit more exciting because you can detect your planes. Instead of having a, a marker uh, on your table, it just loses the immersion of the experience. But if you have just a table there and you're able to have less as a scale 3D objects, that, that makes things a bit more real. So I have, I have a course on that on AR Core. On the AI side, I have three or four courses. I think it's three courses. One course is on object detection using the popular framework called YOLO version 3, which means it stands for you only look once. The other one is on image segmentation, so segmenting different objects, so the road from the car and uh, basically on a pixel level. So you want to segment, say, like maybe a bottle from a person. You can know exactly where the bottle boundaries lie and where the persons uh, start. I have another course on pose estimation. In pose estimation, as it says, detecting the person's uh, key points, body key points. And yeah, with pose estimation, I focus mostly, uh, with all the three courses, I focus mostly in developing in Python, uh, using PyTorch, TensorFlow, uh, all those different libraries. And I said, okay, th this is great that you can develop it in Python and all that, but let's bring it back into Unity because Unity, you have more flexibility. Even though you might not get the same performance as Python, um, you would get, uh, you'd be able to import your 3D objects and make it a bit more interactive. So I'm trying to focus on having things in Unity and just keeping like integrated experience. And then my final course on, uh, that I've created is basically a fusion of my other courses. It's called Ultimate AI CV Practitioner Pro. It's quite a, quite a mouthful, but so there it includes your object detection, object segmentation, pose estimation, but I'm also having another course in there. It's called Android AI Development. So if you starting out with AI and you, you can develop it on your computer, which is great, but now People are all on their phones, they're all using their apps and everything. So I said, let me de develop it using Android so people can build apps on their phone and use that in real life. They can take that experience with them rather than keeping it defined to a computer where no one can use it. And everyone's got Android phones these days.
There was also another another project I have in there. It's called AI on Raspberry Pi. So like I said, uh, moving, making your AI mobile. There was a little accelerator uh, card that you just put into the Raspberry Pi and that uh, vision processing unit would accelerate your deep learning uh, models on the edge. Yeah, so people are moving from the cloud to the edge platforms because number one, privacy and you get better latency when it's on edge rather than on the cloud. Okay, so uh, one of our viewers, Nitin, has asked us that how to implement hologram with Unity. So is there a way to okay. do that? A hologram with Unity? Yeah. One so by hologram, he means the four-dimensional uh, thing. So uh, mm -hmm. Bay is now calling it four-dimensional, but it, it, it's actually not the four-dimensional. It's uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 any object surrounded by multiple cameras, and they capture mm -hmm. it from all that and generate a photogrammetrical object from that. And um, now they represent mm -hmm. it uh, with the augmented reality in the real environment. So this is uh, representing as hologram. So mm -hmm. now there are technologies uh, which are also doing it in real time. So his question mm -hmm. is related to how to do that with Unity. So you're saying I'm standing in a room and there's cameras all around me and you want to basically have 4D or 3D representation of myself. Uh, is that what you're getting at? Yes. So these, there are multiple demos uh, which are recently being shared on our page as well. Mm -hmm. So bring to that, that, how to create uh, holograms with that. So uh, maybe in future you can uh, definitely do a course on that as well. Mm. Yeah. Um, at the moment, you'd require like a whole studio. I did do a video on 4D studios. Uh, I think that's what they've called 4D studios. Yeah. And they created holograms. Now, when, when you say holograms, you think of the things from Star Wars or uh, Iron Man where you got these things popping up. Uh, so holograms can be anything. So you're referring more to like a holographic representation of a person, an object. Uh, those things would require... Nowadays, you get these apps where you can have the object static and then you just move your, your camera around that object and you can bring that into Unity. I haven't actually worked on importing 3D or 4D models into Unity, so, but I'll definitely see if I can cover a course on that. But hopefully it can be used for something other than just a static uh, representation, something that can be used for maybe producing a movie, uh, having your CG, uh, instead of having to post-develop your stuff, you would have your augmented reality experience with that happening. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, let's uh, talk about your knowledge in Bollywood. So, <laughs> yes. you, have, you have very less idea about Bollywood and uh, Hindi movies. So, uh, what was the last time you uh, discovered any good Hindi movie or you watched it? Do you understand Hindi? Uh, yeah, so my wife and I, we watched uh, quite a few Hindi movies. The last one we watched was uh, House Arrest. Uh, it's a Netflix film. The other popular one that we watched was, wait, I'm trying to think now, A Beer Sing. Yeah, uh, we watched that one. Uh, Kabir, uh, Kabir Singh or Abir Singh? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we watched that one. I'm from, quite familiar with Bollywood movies and that, but uh, if you ask me to speak Hindi or Gujarati, yeah, I, <laughs> that's the way I feel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, is there any Bollywood dialogue which you want to speak in Hindi for us? So I challenge all the people who are not from India and mm. have one dialogue from Bollywood. But since you already know Hindi, uh, I'm challenging you to pick your dialogue on your own. So is there anything which comes in your mind? My favorite line is, it's the same, Kabi Kabi. It's, it's, it's one of those inside jokes. I mean, my friend used to have, um, you know, Amitabh Bhishan used to say it in this deep uh, bass voice. I used, to, I used to just, uh, <laughs> I, I used to like the way he said it and I just like put my voice deep and say, Kabi Kabi. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have any famous lines on top of my head. But we, we, we do watch a lot of Shah Rukh Khan movies, Anushka Sharma movies, Kamita Pishan movies. So, yeah, <laughs> mostly look at the subtitles instead of con concentrating on the, uh, the dialogue. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, yeah, here we have it. Uh, she says, Kabi Kabi, Mere Dil, Me Ek Kayal, Atta. Hi. Yeah. I probably butchered it. Yeah. Yes, with the very deep voice in the Amitabh Bachchan style. Kabi Kabi, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so this uh, was pretty much it and thanks for joining us today. 
and mm. you have a lot of our questions about uh, artificial intelligence neural network deep neural network and machine learning and thanks for sharing us and you mm. keep helping uh, so many people using youtube and also mm. using a udemy platform and now yeah. you are coming with your own platform which is going yeah. to provide courses on your mm. own site augmented yeah, augmented startups i have yeah. given the in the post so people definitely can check the check the links and uh, mm. find you on youtube and subscribe to you you are yeah. already popular there are many followers of yours so um yeah and is there anything uh, you want to suggest people that uh, 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 what they should do if uh, somebody wants to learn that uh, how how they should discover you or how should they should uh, come, mm. come and do the profit yeah. So um, for those who want to get started, like uh, right now, if they want to just dive in, um, I, I am planning a Black Friday sale. They can join me on uh, Facebook, YouTube, obviously, I'll have all the links there. With Udemy, I'm sort of trying to move away from Udemy, I'm moving over to my teachable platform or my own platform, basically because I have more flexibility with regards to the support. They have better functions that I can use there. Um, so moving forward, if someone wants to learn more about my courses and have be up to date with the courses, they should check out my website, uh, augmentedstartups.com. They are also announced like uh, Black Friday deals um, on my Facebook group called Augmented Startups. Yeah, I'll, I'm also on Instagram and uh, Discord. There's, there's a lot of social media that I'm on as well. Yeah. Nitin is telling us that keep making good new courses because I think Nitin. <laughs> so mm. yeah, and. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Great. Uh, it's very uh, thank you. I think you'll be <laughs> that you gave us your time and guided us mm. about things in augmented reality and extended reality. Mm. And yeah. Whatever the work you are doing in AI, it's commendable because you are mm. doing something. It's really amazing. Yeah, no, I really appreciate it, uh, and and thank you for also hosting hosting me on the show. Uh, you also got like a, a really great community, and I like that. It. It's good. Okay, have a great day ahead and bye-bye. Thank you, Avid. See you guys. So uh, this was uh, Ram, uh, this was Ritesh with us and he discussed so many things about artificial intelligence, neural networks, and you can definitely find his channel. All the links in the, are in the description so you can find him and ask your questions. If you want to subscribe to any course, you can find him and get the courses. And he is teaching a lot of great deal in uh, uh, artificial intelligence and augmented reality. If you are going to do augmented reality, he is the man because he is literally attempting the things which I even uh, not able to attempt. Uh, uh, and he is doing amazing in that. So must uh, you guys must check. Him. Thank you.